How would you rule? Enlightened and other approaches to power. AP European History, Topic 4.6. Act 1. The Enlightenment's Dance with Power. First off, let's consider Frederick II of Prussia and Joseph II of Austria, our poster boys for enlightened monarchs. Frederick, also known as Old Fritz, was quite the character. He was a flute-playing, poetry-writing king who also happened to be a military genius. Talk about a Renaissance man in the Enlightenment. He embraced Enlightenment ideas, but don't be fooled. He was still all about keeping his royal power intact. Frederick reformed the legal system, made education more accessible, and supported arts and sciences, but he really never intended to share his power with the people. Now let's hop over to Joseph II, the royal reformer. This guy was like the energizer bunny of reform. He abolished serfdom, gave religious freedom a thumbs up, and tried to centralize the government. But plot twist, his people weren't huge fans of all these changes. Too much, too fast, Joe. Act 2, the challenges and reinforcements. Now let's zoom out to the bigger picture. In 1648, the Peace of Westphalia did a number on Europe. It basically told the Holy Roman Empire, sorry, not sorry, but you're not the boss anymore. This was a huge deal because it meant states could choose their own religion and have more autonomy. Enter Prussia and Austria, two rising stars on the European state. Our friend Frederick William I of Prussia, Frederick II's dad, was like the strict parent who saves up for his kid's college fund. He built a mighty army and fortified Prussia's coffers, setting the stage for his son to shine later. Meanwhile, in Austria, Maria Theresa was playing a similar game, strengthening her empire and leaving a legacy for her son, Joseph II, to experiment with his Enlightenment idea. Act 3. Tolerance and Power Shifting By the time the 1800s rolled around, Europe was like a patchwork quilt of religious tolerance and civil rights. Christian minorities were getting more freedom, and some states even said, hey Jews, you're cool too. This was a big step from the my way or the highway attitude of earlier time. Remember how the Peace of Westphalia clipped the Holy Roman Empire's wings? Well, that left room for Prussia to flex its muscles. And the Habsburgs in Austria, they shifted their focus eastward, like someone deciding to try a new restaurant after their favorite one closed. The grand finale, how it all ties together. So how did Enlightenment thought influence forms of political power? It nudged monarchs like Frederick II and Joseph II towards reform, though they clung to their absolute power. And how did political and religious developments challenge or reinforce the idea of a unified Europe? The Peace of Westphalia fragmented the old idea of a unified Europe under the Holy Roman Empire, paving the way for nation states like Prussia and Austria to rise each pursuing its own path influenced by Enlightenment ideas. In the end, the Enlightenment didn't flip the European power scene upside down overnight. It was more like a slow simmer, eventually leading to a boil in the form of revolutions and reforms. How would you have handled that? Tell us in the comments, like the video, and subscribe for more.